Okay, Dr. Rucker here with Nurse Kelly, and we're with Reverse Medical. And today we're going to make several segments about peptides and some of the other products we offer. I'm going to jump right into peptides with an interesting article, and then, you know, our goal is to keep this kind of natural and conversational, so Kelly's going to chime in with ideas, questions, anything she wants to talk about. But peptides are little sequences of proteins. Not many people know, there's a reason I pulled this guy up, Vladimir Kavinson. He literally is the founder of the peptide field. He was the head of the St. Pete Institute of Bioregulation. He's a professor. He was in the Russian military. Yeah. Yeah, look in here. The journey began in the 1980s when he was a medical colonel. And they what talked was he about, looking for? Well, let's see if I can show you this. He, basically, he was working with the Russian medical field and institutions. What's interesting is they did not have a lot of criteria for who they could put in the testing. Classic communism, if somebody paid, I mean, if they paid someone 25 bucks, they start experimenting. And you can see he was doing bovine extracted peptides. Under suspicious circumstances, he died in, I believe, January of this year. What's really interesting to me is he is Putin's personal doctor. Well, that, wow, that's right. ironic. And I don't know what the suspicious circumstance concept means, but they hmm. were using... Um, Look here, peptides for various disorders, and we could go through the types. These are the ones he discovered. They were usually extracts of different organisms of um, bovine. But okay. this led, one thing leads to another, and now we have a lot of peptides. But you might argue, I don't know if anyone gained anything from that except historical significance. And the fact he is, he has a big peptide company. He generally, let's look at this one thing. The assumption is if one was to ingest a peptide, Bioregular for the testes, could a man expect more testosterone release? Is that the idea? Yes, and often there are more functions beside. So, in the example, their peptide apparently creates increased spermatogenesis. So basically, they are just building blocks of a protein. And he discovered ways to make these. Correct? Absolutely. So, peptides... The fancy term is little tiny chains of amino acids. And then the next thing you know, they can be simple, like melatonin or glutathione. Those are like short. three and super short. Or they're going to be more complicated, like growth hormone. Um, Semorelin. Semorelin is a fragment of GnRH. So, so the first point is that's a little bit of a history of peptides. Okay. I think the second big point to make is we get questions from our patients. What peptides are available? Why the rage? I, yeah, why the rage? So I'm going to point out something else. Great. I pulled up this FDA circuit that was sent to all the compounding pharmacies. I'm not a pro on the different FDA categories, but I'm going to try to summarize what I see. Category 1, it says bulk drug substances under evaluation. And Category 2 is what we're talking about. It used to be all these well under evaluation. So interestingly enough, you see that L-theanine is under evaluation, and so is GHK-CU. The copper peptide. Yeah, which from my research has like some similarities to Botox. It means it's helping with collagen and wrinkle process. But like I said about Dr. K's findings in Russia, sometimes you affect one thing and many others are affected. So okay. L-theanine, if I recall, is an extract from... I think green tea, but it causes relaxing properties. It's ridiculous that it's being investigated. It's a supplement. But prior to when this update came out, it says September of 23. So January of 2023, we could liberally prescribe for our patients AOD, 9604, 9604, BPC, CJC 1295, Epitalin. Um, many of these now see they did put injectable GHK here. Ibutamorin, Kiss Peptide, these were all phenomenal in uh, the, the TB family. But the list right here, there's others here. Motsi was for weight loss. These were phenomenal in very various ways, and they were all banned. They are now the significant safety concerns. Why do you think that is? Because I've taken quite a few of those. 
I know a lot of people that take them or were taking them and it was improving their quality of life and their health. So yeah, so well, I believe it's a pretty simple theory. I believe behind it all is the corporate network of corporate pharma, big pharma. So they have compounds that they'd rather you take. If you take a lot of these, like BPC-157, they're going to lose all their tramadol patients, all their Vicodin patients, all their Which are all gabapentin. Unhealthy. They're going to lose antidepressant patients, and then their, their whole business model gets smashed. They probably saw that blip in their scale, and they didn't like it, so then they sent an army of regulators in to fight these guys. And that's also explains behind the scenes the battles with tirzapatide and... Uh, the versus we go be the weight loss stuff that is technically a peptide also now one key thing is some of these peptides another good designation to understand like bpc 157 is natural and a harness from gut cells but semaglutide and those compounds even though they were derived from a natural compound they're not technically they're synthetic peptides so that's another designation we need to be aware of but that was it this first segment of my talk i really just want to cover how peptides were discovered by this brilliant Russian doctor, how it's become a big field, and how the FDA battles with compounding pharmacies is the reason why many of these have been taken away. Which is it, unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but apparently with a new administration coming in and with uh, someone who's an environmental attorney, Robert Kennedy, in charge of battling the FDA on behalf of the benefit of the United States consumers and voters, there's possibly some good changes down the road, but that's pure speculation by me and hope. Yeah, definitely. I mean, these can change people's lives. But that concludes my first segment and our first segment. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to bring you more information.